Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, now that the calendar has turned to February, that means Valentine's Day isn't too far away. I wonder how many people know the true history and origin of Valentine's Day. That Valentine isn't Cupid, that mythical Roman god of love who would fly around shooting people with arrows to fill them with uncontrollable love and desire. Rather, St. Valentine was a physician and a priest in Rome whose love for God brought about his death. We see Valentine was martyred or killed on February 14th, around the year 270, by the Roman Emperor Claudius when he refused to renounce his Christian faith. And so that's why we celebrate Valentine's Day on February 14th. It was the day of Valentine's death and his birthday into heaven. But you know, this story, this true story of St. Valentine isn't very romantic. And so I think most Americans would prefer the story of Cupid over Valentine, despite the name of the holiday. For many, love is often thought as a feeling, especially feelings of romance or physical desire. Take our television programs, for example. I'm a little embarrassed to say, but one of the first television shows I remember watching with my parents was The Love Boat. Do you remember The Love Boat? If you do, you probably remember the theme song that was at the beginning of the show. I won't sing it, but I'll read you the words. Love, exciting and new, come aboard, we're expecting you. Love, life's sweetest reward, let it flow, it floats back to you. The love boat soon will be making another run. The love boat promises something for everyone. Set a course for adventure, your mind on a new romance. Love won't hurt anymore. It's an open smile on a friendly shore. It's love. Welcome aboard. It's love. It's a cute song. I still sing it sometimes at home. Ask Tabitha. But do you notice here that love is described almost exclusively in terms of romantic feelings? And yet, this song seems rather tame, cute, even cheesy compared with present-day television programs focusing on love. As another example, take The Bachelor and its sister program, The Bachelorette. Did you know The Bachelor first aired in 2002 and is now in its 23rd season? I didn't know the show was around that long. I knew it was around a long time, but 2002. It must remain very popular because I know a new uh, series started about a month ago. And as you probably know, the show revolves around a single guy, a bachelor, who is presented with a pool of as many as 30 women from whom he is supposed to choose a wife. And each week as the show goes along, one or more women is eliminated. They don't receive the, the red rose from the bachelor. And so finally, at the end of the show, there's one remaining who has the opportunity to perhaps receive a proposal from the bachelor and become his wife. Now, what could go wrong with this process, you might ask? This thoughtful, careful process of going from 30 down to 1. Because, I mean, if you've ever watched the show, which I have a few times, throughout the show, the women are continually professing their love and desire for the bachelor and he for them. What could go wrong with this? 
Well, did you know that in the first 22 seasons of the show, only one bachelor is still married to the woman he chose? One out of 22 isn't a very good percentage for finding love, to say the least, even though that's supposed to be what the show's about, right? But then again, The Bachelor isn't really about finding love, is it? It's about lust. It's about publicity for the contestants. It's about entertainment for us who watch. And of course, it's about making money for ABC and the producers of the show. For they know shows like this are popular. Because they know that we know that love is hard. It's difficult. And so we like to escape from time to time for a few hours into a make-believe fantasy world of romance where couples stroll hand in hand on the beach, professing their love for each other while eating dinner by candlelight in exotic locations around the world. We enjoy this. At the same time, we know it's not real. It's fantasy. Just ask anyone who's been married or who's had a child or who's been in any kind of human relationship, and they will tell you that love, true love, for another person is hard, very hard. For love is not primarily a feeling or romantic. It is first and foremost an action. To love someone, to truly love someone, is to work and sacrifice on behalf of him or her. Love is hard because it requires work and sacrifice. We see this, for example, in the traditional wedding vows that are still spoken in our churches. The bride and groom face each other before the altar, and they say, I take you to be my wedded wife, my wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part according to God's holy will, and I pledge to you my faithfulness. Notice there's nothing about feelings in those vows. It's all about what each spouse in the marriage pledges to do for the other. That come hell or high water, the two of them will stick together. And that they'll work hard to preserve their marriage, even if the feelings of romance have faded or are no longer there. Now this view of love and marriage may seem to be old-fashioned. And it certainly wouldn't make for a popular television series today. But my friends, this is the teaching of Holy Scripture. St. Paul writes in today's epistle, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never Again, notice there's nothing here about romance or feelings. And there's certainly nothing here about lust or physical desires. Rather, love is described as an attitude that puts the needs of the other ahead of your own. In fact, true love is marked by self-sacrifice, in which you set aside your own needs, wants, and desires for the sake of the needs, wants, and desires of someone else. My friends, this is what makes love so hard. For by nature, by our own sinful nature, we desire and want what is best for us. At its core, that is what sin is. To be curved in on yourself so that you only see and consider what you think to be best for me, myself, and I. And so therefore, we see that love cannot be manufactured on a cruise ship or in a mansion in Southern California or in exotic romantic locations around the world. Rather, true love 
can come from only one place. And that, of course, is from God. For as the Bible says, God is love. And we know that the love that God had for us and showed to us was hard, extremely hard and difficult for him. For it involved sacrifice, the sacrifice of his only son, Jesus, for us. For God so loved the world. How? That he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And so if you want to see what true love is, it's not seen in a red rose given to a contestant on The Bachelor or even in a bouquet of red roses given to your sweetie on Valentine's Day, as beautiful and nice as that is. Rather, true love is seen in the red blood of Jesus flowing from his hands, head, feet, and side on the cross to win forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation for you and for the world. For scripture says, in this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation, the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And as the Bible says, we love because God first loved us. We love because in our baptism, Jesus has joined us to himself, bearing our sins with him in his death and raising us to new life with him in his resurrection so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And this new life in Jesus, cultivated and strengthened by him through his word and holy supper, this new life is then marked and filled by love. Love that he pours into us so that we may love him and one another. His spirit, who now dwells within you, leads you to do that which is well-pleasing to him, including loving and supporting your spouse, your children, your neighbors, and your church. As you know, immediately after the worship service today, we'll hold the dedication of our new elevator edition. And this elevator project is a project of love. It has and will continue to require self-sacrificial service and giving on the part of our members. We rejoice that the construction is almost done. And yet we also know the hard work of paying for it is just beginning. But my friends, I know that we will do it out of love so that many others can join us in this place to hear God's word and rejoice in his steadfast, sacrificial love for us in Jesus, even as we rest in the knowledge that his love covers a multitude of our sin, too. Yes, true love is hard, but it is God's gift to you so that you may love him and one another. The love he gives you isn't a momentary, false kind of love, a feeling that's here today and gone tomorrow. Rather, it's an eternal love, a love that never ends. It's a love that will never pass away, even when heaven and earth pass away in your own place in it. For it is a love that fills you with abiding peace and joy, because it fills you with Jesus, the Holy One of God, the one who loves you so much that he gave his life for you so that you would be his forever. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.